Services are nice, but they're not very helpful if you don't know their address. You can use the get or describe commands to manually determine the IP address and port for a service. But that technique is only useful when you're fat finger debugging something, not as part of an automated cluster deployment. What we need is service discovery. DNS is an optional cluster add-on. What I mean is that DNS is not guaranteed to be part of the cluster, but your life is so much easier when it is. When your cluster has DNS, it will automatically create DNS records for every service. The beauty of this situation is that service domain names are deterministic. Therefore, we know what a service's domain name will be before it's created. A service's DNS record has the form serviceName.namespace. Let me demonstrate this by trying to curl the joke generator service again. Since I wiped the cluster clean after the last tutorial, we need to create the curly pod and the joke generator deployment and service again. I'm going to establish terminal access to curly. Then we can curl the service. But since the service and the curly pod are both in the same namespace, we can drop the namespace from the curl command. Why don't we try to curl the service from a different namespace? Let's start by creating a new namespace called indigo. After that, Create the curly pod in the indigo namespace so that we can curl from there. Now we can test things out. Let's get command line access to the curly pod in the indigo namespace. When I curl the wrong namespace, we get no output. But when I use the correct one, we receive a joke. Here's the point. Be sure to include the namespace when communicating with a service that's in a different namespace. DNS is not your only service discovery option. You also have access to environment variables, which evaluate to the IP or port number of the target service. The premise is straightforward. When a pod starts running on a node, Kubernetes gives the pod environment variables corresponding to the port and IP address of the services in the cluster. This is the format of the hostname environment variable, and this is the format of the port number environment variable. All dashes in the service name are converted into underscores. So what do you think the environment variables are for the cluster IP service? Let's find out if you're right. Because I'm starting out with a blank cluster, I need to create curly pod so that we can test out the services environment variables. Then I'm going to create the joke generator deployment and associated service. Now I'm going to run an interactive shell on curly pod and list the environment variables on that pod. Ruh -roh. There are a bunch of environment variables, but none of them correspond to the cluster IP service. Here's what I did wrong. I created the curly pod before I created the service. Pods are only populated with environment variables for services which already exist. To prove this, I'm going to delete the curly pod and then recreate it. Then I'm going to print the environment variables again. Ta-da! The service's environment variables are now there. Now, let's curl the service using these environment variables. 